friendship and solidarity. I see it all over the nation. I see it in the huge amount of volunteering, in the huge amount of mobilization to the army, in the huge amount of doing good to each other, of helping each other in so many consequences and so many spheres of life. I encourage my people, I bless the people of Israel. We shall definitely overcome. We shall definitely be victorious. We've always done so. It will take time, but we shall overcome and we shall be victorious. I met the families of the hijacked and kidnapped citizens of Israel. It was extremely tragic and extremely painful. So many people live in a reality of a nightmare, not knowing their whereabouts and the, the, the real facts of, of their loved ones. Each and every one of you can imagine that. You've met families. Israel will do whatever it can to bring them back home as soon as possible, safely. But this, but this requires an immediate call to the international community not to sit idly by and do whatever it takes to bring them back home immediately. As President of the State of Israel, as I ask you all to tell the stories of the victims. I ask you all to remember it because there is a short-sightedness in the cycle of media and news, but the pain, the pain will remain forever. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Amy Times of Israel. There are some questions and answers there. Maybe we can uh, take a listen. Uh, President Herzog taking uh, questions from the press in English. Let's tune in. Um, how concerned are you that that support will wane, that the tide will change the longer this goes on, the higher the death toll in Gaza rises? Well, this is exactly the moment of truth. Nation must stand up to the truth. I just heard the comment of the Chancellor, Chancellor Olaf Scholz of Germany speaking with moral clarity. He expressed moral clarity as to the situation. We expect nations in the world to express clear moral clarity regarding the situation and this terrible massacre. ITV, please. One second. Sorry, there's something with your mic. Okay. I got shot. Yeah, you see this picture? I think it speaks for itself. The baby caught in Berry. I think this tells it all. President Herzog, Raghi Omar from ITV News in the United Kingdom. You spoke very passionately about uh, saying that Israel was uh, not retaliating but targeting uh, w with regard to the operations in Gaza. Um, but even President Biden, who spoke so personally and passionately with regard, reg with reg regard to what was happening in Gaza, spoke about the importance of the laws of war. And the humanitarian situation within Gaza. So with that in mind, what can Israel do to alleviate the impact of this conflict on two million civilians, many of whom have nothing to do with Hamas? First of all, we have to understand there's a state, there's a state in a way that, was a, that has built a machine of evil right at our doorstep. It's an entire nation out there that is responsible. It's not true. This rhetoric about civilians not, where, where not aware, not involved, it's absolutely not true. They could have risen up. They could have fought against that evil regime, which took over Gaza in a coup d'etat, murdering their family members who were in Fatah. There's a short memory in the world. Israel evacuated Gaza unilaterally in order to show that it's willing to make peace. I was a member of that cabinet. We said to our nation, this will be Hong Kong of the Middle East. Well, reality has turned into a tragedy, okay? Therefore, I must say that this situation impacts the entire vision of people as to the ability to adhere to the same old rhetoric. We are working 
operating militarily according to rules of international law, period, unequivocally. But we're at war. We are at war. We're at war with at our, we are defending our homes. We're protecting our homes. That's the truth. And then when a nation protects its home, it fights. And we will fight until we'll break their backbone. Please. Becky. Becky Anderson from CNN. The collective punishment of a civilian population amounts to a war crime under international law. Uh, the US has warned Israel to uphold laws of war. But I just answered, Becky, you haven't heard probably their reply to ITV. And I'm quite disappointed that that's what you're asking instantaneously. Haven't you seen? You've seen. You're all there. You were all there. You've seen. So now we're starting with the rhetoric about uh, 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 war crimes. Really? Truly? Truly? With respect, what do you mean? With respect, Truly? You see, I just said that Israel abides by international law operates by international law. Every operation is secured and covered and reviewed legally. With all due respect, I truly believe that this comes totally out of context. Please. CBN. Julie, CBN. Julie Stahl from CBN News. Um, so, I know people have asked you, but how do you think that this is going to, how are you going to be able to mitigate this, like suddenly everybody switching back to Israel, the powerful one who is... But that's always the tragedy no. of short memories. I, I get it. We kept on saying I've time and again, time. time and again, for the last few months, every day there was a terror attack here. Yes. Every day. Okay, and nobody understood our situation. There is a lot of anger in this country because people did not understand what we are talking about. There is no, there is no excuse to murdering innocent civilians in any way, in any context. And believe me, Israel will operate and always operates according to the international rules and will do the same in this battle too. So I was around when Israel was inside Gaza and it was a whole lot better for the Gazans when Israel was there. Do you foresee any scenario where Israel will go back into Gaza? I'm not Gaza? dealing with it right now. We are in battle. We are not dealing with the final outcome of this I mean, tragedy. It, it would be good for the people right there. Right now we are defending our citizens. I was yesterday in Sderot. In their houses there were terrorists swarming around. In their houses. Still swarming around. In their houses. Please. Matt Fry, Channel 4. President Herzog, uh, Matt Fry, Channel 4 News in the UK. Um, thank you very much. Um, let me first of all say that there's an enormous amount of genuine, authentic sympathy for Israel and for what your country is going through right now. But listening to your answers in the last few minutes, I'm a little confused. Because on one hand, you say that Israel abides by the rules of war and is very careful to avoid the loss of civilian life in the Gaza Strip. But at the same time, you seem to hold the people of Gaza responsible for not trying to remove Hamas. No, well, I'll Hamas. tell you. But let me finish. Do you my hold question. a missile in your kitchen, in your living room? Let, can I ask my question? A missile sir? that is sent on our head here, and if there will be a siren, it's a missile from okay. that kitchen. My, my question is this, if I may. You seem to hold the people of Gaza, the civilians of Gaza, responsible for not removing Hamas, and therefore, by implication, that makes them legitimate targets. No, I didn't say that. But I did not say that. I want to that. make it clear. I was asked something about separating civilians from Hamas. But with all due respect, with all due respect, if you have a missile in your goddamn kitchen and you want to shoot it at me, am I allowed to defend myself? Yes, no one that's is, the situation. No one is denying the These right missiles are yourself. there. These missiles are launched. The button is pressed. Okay. The missile comes out from the kitchen onto my children. But, but the question is this. Ultimately, 
You can't remove the people of Gaza. They're going to be stuck in this neighborhood. So we have to fight. What do you want us to do? Well, so we tell them well, get what, out and we fight against the launchers. Eventually, what happens eventually? Right? Once this war is over now, you're going to have to live with them side by side. Absolutely. What's the plan? Well, the plan is we have to make sure the Hamas will not be able to repeat this again. That is the plan. That's what we are trying to do. And if you with all the respect, I see nations fighting terror. Okay, many decent nations, when they fight terror, they fight terror. We are fighting terror. Humanity has to decide, are we accommodating terror or are we fighting terror? We are fighting terror. And we saw the worst atrocity possible. We see the worst atrocity possible by a whole campaign of a movement which has major support with our neighbors. Major, major. They believe, many people believe in it. I agree. There are many, many innocent Palestinians who don't agree to this. But unfortunately, in their homes, there are missiles sh shooting at us, at my children, at the entire nation of Israel. We have to defend ourselves. We have the full right to do so. And it's about time that the world understands it. This is the tragedy of using terror. And terror has no, there's no mercy to terror. Great, please. Cashman, Jerusalem Post, please. Uh, Greg Cashman of Jerusalem Post. Uh, Mr. President, there have been a lot of complaints from people who have lost loved ones that there's been no official notification or reaction when they actually spoke to witnesses who saw their loved ones killed. Why is that happening? So there is much more of a, 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 an organizational movement. I, we made it public following the meeting here with the families with uh, General Gal Hirsch and two other generals who've taken upon uh, themselves, there's this much speedier process of making contact with the families. It is true, it's a, pro it's a problem, but it's been dealt with because there was uh, an overwhelming, uh, overwhelming tragedy. It's like uh, in an earthquake all of a sudden. Carl, Swedish television, please. Yes, uh, thank you, my name's Carl, I'm from Swedish television. Um, Discussion has occurred that uh, the prospect of, at some point, negotiations to have these many captured people, uh, these hostages released. Do you see any possibility of any type of deal that would be struck? Why the, should there be a deal? They should be released immediately. You took babies, you took old people with dementia, with a Filipino or other caretakers. What's the issue here? Isn't it the, no, the, the most decent moral thing to do is the immediate release of all the prisoners, well, or, of all so, the abducted and host, hostages? Yes, but that's one thing, but just would you be willing to enter into I'm any type of negotiations? I'm not discussing this at all. It's not under my domain. Yes, please. Becky, you wanted to ask something? Yes. Mr. President, Maria Fenoshina, RT from Russia. I have a very specific question after a battle in Ashkelon. Idea found, among other things, RPGs with markings of one of the units um, uh, of the Ukrainian forces. And after that, one of the chiefs of Ukrainian security confirmed that Ukrainian weapons were discovered um, in Israel. Um, Ukrainian were, weapon? I don't know, explain yeah. to me. So I there was understand. a battle in um, Ashkelon, and uh, after IDF came there, they found um, weapons with markings of the Ukrainian armed forces. You know they do stamps like on but weapons. But I'm unaware of this directly or indirectly at all, and I was in Ashkelon yesterday. I'm not aware of this story at all. And there is also a video circulating uh, online where uh, Hamas is thanking the Ukrainian government for providing them with weapons. Of course, it's really hard to verify independently this I video. I don't know. I'll be happy to so receive it. Do you have it, any I'm information about Not Ukraine known to probably? me at all. None of this is known to us. Never heard of it. Okay. And also, um, but, uh, following uh, up. We can check it. Thank you very much for that. And also you said that international media is supposed to show to the world the atrocities done by Hamas, but we see kind of um, selection here, unfortunately, because, uh, for example, our channel was not um, invited to um, any of the things like uh, kibbutz, Kfar uh, Azza, Obirei, and okay, our so requests Jason, were... Jason, you will check it? 
Okay. Yeah, thank okay. you very much because we would okay. love to show Next, what you would love us please. to show. Thank you. Alessandra Buzzetti, I'm Italian correspondent for TV2000, Italian Catholic TV and Vatican TV. So one question is, have you, okay. have you had any direct contact or request by the Vatican, by the Pope, um, or by we, the well, Neocardinal yes, Bishop? I, want to, and, uh, another one, and I commend yeah. Pope Francis's statements that were very strong and meaningful to us. But do you have any specific request from them, even about the minority of Christians, not only in Gaza, even in the West Bank? I don't understand the question. I can't hear you. You have to repeat the question. Yes. Did you have any direct contact with them, with the Vatican, or with the Cardinal Pizzaballa? Did you receive any specific request for them, from them? Uh, no. Thank you. Right now, I am informed about two heavily wounded uh, people in the road by rockets. Yes. Becky Anderson from CNN. Sir, does Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu bear responsibility for this situation I don't intend at present to, I'm and not, this colossal we are failure at, of We're at war. I'm not dealing with this issue at all until after the war. Naturally, you follow up Israeli discussion and discourse, but I'm not dealing with it right now. Okay? Yep. Finally. Hi. For Haaretz in English. I didn't know that. No. Okay. Now you know. Um, we have seen many cycles. I guess you know Vivian Silver. Of course. So you want to say a word to everybody here about Vivian Silver? Everybody in the peace community in Israel is pained by what happened to Vivian Silver. And to so many other peace lovers around in those areas. Yes. yes. Uh, we have seen so many cycles. They every time, every time there is a an escalation, <clears throat> rocket fire, we see many very colossal campaigns in Gaza. Each one more destructive. Each one brings lots of opprobrium to Israel from the world. And still, the cycles return. So this one is huge. Will we see any different result? I think that those who are in charge are dealing with it. They made it clear what their intentions are and how we are moving along. We have to change the equation. And you're, you're right. It cannot repeat itself anymore. But do we the, change the, the equation by doing more of and what you're, we've been doing? And your advice would be not to do anything. No, I'm asking What you. would your advice be? I'm not an advisor what now. What would your advice be? What do you mean? What is there? I mean, what? Allow the mob to take over the city? This is the intention of the mob. They want to take over the city. This is much worse than the mob. Uh, Thank the, you all this, very uh, much. Yeah, final yes. question. Yeah. So this is HJ. My name is HJ from Korean News Agency, KRM. As of last night, actually, uh, Korean Christians donated about $450,000 to help uh, Israel. That's nice. And uh, for right now, we're in the middle of the war. But what can, what are you expecting the international countries uh, to really help? What other, no, what think, can we help? How first can of all, we help? we're getting international support in the international community. We are a strong country, a strong and resilient nation. Um, world Jewry has been fantastic uh, with the huge solidarity. So many of our friends, many of our Christian friends around the world have shown immense solidarity. Uh, leaders all over the world, parliaments and, uh, and special heritage sites have all portrayed our blue and white. I, th I hope and I request that this support continues for a while because the equation in the Middle East is very clear. There's an empire of evil who's trying to derail the entire process of inclusion, of a peaceful dialogue, of normalization. There's an entire empire of evil who's trying to do that. It's a historic train that has moved out of the station for the last 50 years to have the inclusion and the relation between Jew and Muslim in this region. It should be a region of peace. I've been portraying this region as the source of energy for Africa, Asia, and Europe. Together, we must not let this train be derailed, the train of inclusion and peace in the region.